Of the praise, Ramos Kadala Mahada da 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 ba, Radeske Bradi da 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 ba, Sibradi Azeke Mahato Puri Azara da 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 ba, Raba ba 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 mo si de 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 we bless your name, we bless your name, we bless your name, we bless your name. Lord, we bless your name, we bless your name, we bless your name. We say to you, we ascribe the glory, we ascribe the praise. Father, to you we ascribe the honor this morning, O God. For thine is thy kingdom, thine is thy glory, thine is thy power. Maliska de Mahando Puraska da Mahataya. Rabos ke de Mahasana Dada. Have your way, love me this morning. Let the name of Jesus be exalted. Let the name of Jesus be lifted. Let the name of Jesus be adored. Maseke de Mahataya. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place and this place. We fill this space of your love with your power. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So we welcome freedom in this room. This morning, we welcome the power of the Holy Ghost in this morning. We welcome the power of the Holy Ghost in this tabernacle. Yes, we welcome. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. We open up our hearts to God. We open up our hearts to God. Oh Jesus, you are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome in this place, O God. We welcome you in this place. This is holy ground. This is holy ground, God. This is holy ground. Let your name be exalted, O God. 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 Let your kingdom come and let your will be done, Lord. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done, Lord. This morning, let your kingdom come and let your will be done. Hallelujah. We worship your name, O God. We worship your name, O God. We worship your name, O God. Say, I'm a hundred and 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 a
rule, Lord. Oh, reign over our situations, Lord. Reign over everything in this earth, Lord God. We want to see your glory and your power, Lord. Oh, reign, oh God. Reign, oh God. Reign. Oh, reign, oh God. Oh, reign, oh God. Reign, Jesus, reign. Reign. Let's begin to welcome the presence of the Lord in this place this morning. Begin to welcome the presence of the Lord wherever you are. If you are in your car, driving to work, wherever you are, take some time and just begin to welcome the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord is heavy in this place this morning and he is here to meet you at your knee. We welcome you, Jesus, into this place, into the gathering of the brethren, Lord. So God, you said despise not the, the gathering of the, of the brethren, the fellowship of the brethren, Lord. So this morning we are gathered here in obedience to your word, in obedience to your, your, your instructions, Lord. And so we, we say, Lord, we commend, Father God, that our hearts begin to worship you this morning, Lord. We lay down our burdens at your feet, God. We cast down our crowns. We humble ourselves this morning and we say, Lord, the king is in the room, Lord, so we humble ourselves. We humble ourselves, God, this morning, and we say, Lord, to you be all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration, God. God, we join with the 24 elders and we say, holy, 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 holy are you, Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and is to come. So we worship you this morning, God, and we say, glorious are you, Lord. Glorious are the works of your hands, God. Have your way in this place. Have your way in this place. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. What he promised us, it has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. It's a really easy, easy song to sing. See what the Lord has done. Oh, see what the Lord has done. City Light, we sing this song. So see what the Lord is doing. Oh, won't you see what the Lord is doing now? And what his promise does, it will come to pass. And we will see what the Lord has done. Come on, sing it over yourself this morning. And we say, see what my God has done. Oh, see what my God has done. Over the promises he made in your life. And what he promised us, it has come to pass. By faith, see what the Lord is doing oh won't you perceive what the Lord is doing see what the Lord has done and see what the Lord has done 
done. That's the word of God over us this morning. We will see what the Lord is doing. We will see what the Lord has done. We will see what the Lord has done. Oh, he promised us his son and he fulfilled his promises. So what is it that you think the Lord cannot do? This morning, the Lord is saying, see what I have done. And thank me for what I'm still to do. And we'll see what the Lord has done. We will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. We will see what the Lord has done.
the glory of the Lord. Man, I believe it this morning 100%. The glory. This is a season that the Lord has made. The glory to break the chains. The glory of the chains of bondage holding our generation back. Sing the glory, the glory. The Lord is restoring peace in the nations. The glory, the glory of the Lord. Lord is asking you this morning what do you see sing the glory the glory I choose to perceive what the Lord perceives the glory I choose to sing from a place of victory the glory of the Lord is oh singing the glory the glory sing the glory The glory of the Lord is coming. Sing, it's coming down, it's coming down, it's coming down, it's coming down. It's coming down in the sanctuary, it's coming down. The Lord blesses those who diligently seek Him. It's coming down, yeah. It's coming down, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's coming down, God, we receive it, Lord. It's coming down, God, it will not pass us by, Lord. We choose to perceive it. And we choose to believe it, Lord. We choose to see what you see, Lord, God. Help our unbelief, God, yeah. Let our situations not cloud the view that the Lord wants us to see. We choose to see with the lens of Christ. Oh, it's coming down. 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 It's coming down.
this place King of power <laughs> Fill this place Woo! We welcome you Lord King of glory Fill this place When I sing about the Lord I always try to use my imagination To think about what, what it looks like for the manifest power of God and the presence of God to actually fill up a room. Woo. Remember when, when the Lord appeared to Moses, it was such a holy ground. He told him, take off your, your shoes. It's holy ground. And so I just imagine like chariots of horses. <laughs> I imagine a, a, the trail of the robe of the Lord filling up this place and us just inhaling the fresh aroma of the Lord what an honor what an honor to know God what an honor to inhabit the presence of the Lord what an honor to have the Holy Spirit which is God live in us us who are unclean but by the righteousness of Christ in Romans 8 we now have access to the presence of the Lord, to the throne room of the Lord. We have access. We are now called royal priesthood. Woo! A chosen generation that will usher the kingdom of the Lord into the world. And soon, all the kingdoms of the world will belong to our King and our Lord. What an honor. What a privilege. What a privilege, Lord, to inhabit your presence. Such an honor, such an honor, such a privilege, Lord. So we sing, King of glory, fill this place. Ask the Lord to fill your heart. Glory, God is interested in your heart, not the physical appearance. Fill this place, King of power, King of heaven, King of the earth. Fill this place, fill this heart. I enthrone you, King, over my heart, over my thoughts, over my mind, over my soul. It's no longer I who lives. But Christ in me, the hope of glory, the hope of glory, it's no longer I who lives, but Christ in me, the hope of glory. Presence. We'll 
dance in your presence till you come again. So we'll sing hallelujah. So we'll sing hallelujah till you come again, Lord. Hallelujah. And we'll dance in your presence till you come again. So we'll sing hallelujah. So we'll sing hallelujah till you come again. And we'll dance in your presence till you come again. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. So we'll sing hallelujah till you come again. We will dance in your presence. Till you come again, till you come again, Lord. So we'll sing hallelujah till you come again. We can only imagine what it would look like. And we'll dance in your presence till you come again. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we have come to give you praise this morning. We have come to glorify your name. We say, King of glory, the Lord God Almighty, be exalted in our midst. We hallow your name this morning, O oh God. We say, be lifted, O oh God, be lifted in every situation. In each and every one of us, O oh God, this day, Lord, let your name be lifted. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be exalted, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for what you're about to do, what you're already doing, oh God. Let all the glory come back to you. Let all the praise come back to you this morning. We thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped and everyone says, Amen. Why don't we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Kindly let's have our seats in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you so much, Afu. That's a blessing. I, I feel like I've taken shower three times. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Worship is refreshing. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, come let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but today, of all the days today, I was very excited. And not that I'm a uh, pastor's confession. Some days I'm not that excited. But I'm telling you today, I was, for some reason, I was excited. Amen. I believe there's a breakthrough for somebody today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just want to welcome you, all of you that are, are streaming with us this morning from wherever you're watching. Welcome. We thank God for your life. We thank God that you're able to connect with us. And uh, we are open. We are open. A very good friend of mine today uh, that we are honored to have. Uh, with us came in this morning and uh, on the doors it's written that we are still uh, streaming uh, via Zoom and we are not meeting. That's, that's an error. We are actually here live in the flesh. Hallelujah. And I want you all to uh, just make note of that. We are honored today uh, to have a, 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 I won't say a visitor. He's been with us throughout this journey. Uh, maybe not physically, but praying for us, supporting us. Uh, his family, many times that we've had events, uh, they've always been standing by us and standing with us uh, uh, through this, as we're doing this, uh, the Lord's work. And uh, last, I think two or three weeks ago, he asked me, hey, when is the service beginning? I want to come and be there. And uh, I'm, I'm just honored. You don't know what that meant to me. You know, when I, 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 a good friend that uh, <coughs> we've worked We've known each other for a long time, uh, before, before U.S. You know, there are those that we knew after U.S., but uh, uh, before U.S., and uh, uh, Mr. John Mushiri, it's an honor, my brother, to have you with us. Hallelujah. You want to greet the church? Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Well, uh, praise the Lord. Uh, my brother, the worship was just uh, yes, amazing. Yes, yes, yes. I just yes. felt the presence of God and uh, just the anointing of God uh, in Amen. your life. I just want to thank you, and I pray that God will continue to increase you 
and uh, continue doing what you're doing. I tell you, the hand of God is in your life. Yes. Well, church, I'm so glad to be here this morning. Hallelujah. It's uh, nice to <laughs> fellowship with my brother and uh, the church. And one thing I want to say is, uh, you know, the environment that you're in uh, will determine your destiny. Amen. And I can tell you this is a good ground. This is a good Amen. environment. I tell Amen. you, I felt the presence of God in just Praise such God. a special way. Praise God. And I just want to encourage you to uh, continue to persist. I'm telling you that worship was just out of this yes. world. It uh, yes. set my heart in a good place to receive Praise. from the Lord. Amen. And it just reminded me of the days when we were growing up. Yes. You know, just the power and the presence of God. And, and there are times even this week I was praying and I was saying, God, I, I long for those days. Mm. I long for those days where, you know, you would walk and you could almost touch the presence of God yes. in a tangible yes. way. And I, I pray that God will restore the church and revive in us Jesus and take us name. back in uh, Jesus to name. the God that we used to know. Amen. And, and at times I wonder, you know, this generation, Amen. did we water things down Come on. just a little bit? You know, right. we, we, we catered more to the intellect. And there's nothing wrong with that. Mm. But there's a spirit man that needs to be fed. Yes. And I tell you what I felt today, just the presence, it took Praise me to God. a place Glory to God. Uh, that, uh, you know, at times you don't feel and, and uh, you know, when you, when you get in, in, in mm. fellowship. I want to tell you, brethren, that this is a good ground. Glory to God. This is a great environment. Glory and to this God. is a place where Amen. God can expand you, can grow you, and you can get to higher Shake places. I'm honored to be here. Amen. I'm I am blessed. Pleasure. My heart is expectant. Amen. And uh, this will be one of our many times. Thank you, brothers Amen. and sisters, and may God deeply bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you so, so much. Hallelujah. Uh, my brother John Mushiri, uh, we, we do ride together, uh, the bike, and uh, uh, every now and then we uh, do catch up on how it's going, and uh, I'm, I'm so, we are so honored uh, to have you with us. I personally am so blessed. I believe, uh, you know, God places some men in your life or some people in your life for a divine purpose, and... Um, there are times that they come into your life at a particular season to boost you, to encourage you, to strengthen you. And uh, you're one of those men. And I pray that the grace of God, as you've said, I still remember Fungamano when we used to meet for... He's a very good praise, praise and worship leader, by the way. He's, he's, uh, he's just being humble. <laughs> But I remember Mfungamano, uh, we used to meet uh, for overnight prayer meetings uh, like what we used to have at uh, Eli Court City. But that was something else. It was just out of this world. The glory of God would descend upon that place. I uh, would begin worshiping and some days would not even listen to the word because the cloud of glory would fill the place. And I'm in agreement, the days of glory needs to come back. In Jesus' name, amen. I believe that one of the things that God is doing, it's not that those days are totally gone. It's just that men who are determined to press in, to see God, are not yet there. Hallelujah. But God is beginning to raise up men. He's beginning to raise up women. When Elijah goes and, uh, you know, He's on the mountain with these false prophets. The Bible tells us he calls uh, the entire 400 and something prophets to come so that they can decide who's the God, who's the real God. And the Bible tells us at that particular point that he calls, uh, they, they cry out to their gods and nothing happens. But then this man of God comes and calls. He makes things complicated. They make this altar, says, no, put water around it. Make it even harder in the physical, so to think, for God to do it. But as they do that, the Bible says not only was the stones, con uh, not only was the wood on the, uh, consumed on the altar, but the stones also consumed. Hallelujah. And then a few, um, you know, a few, if you read a few chapters or a chapter after that, uh, the Bible tells us that this man of God goes into hiding. The man who experienced the power of God the man who experienced visitation goes into hiding. And God tells him, what are you doing there? You know? And he says, you know, this is what has happened. He runs and God tells him, no, I have 7,000 more prophets that have not bowed. 
And I believe that in our generation, there are men and women that haven't bowed. Hallelujah. The glory of God is coming back. You know, it's interesting that you say that this morning when I was praying, I was, the Lord was just giving me flash, uh, flashes of what uh, I have seen in this nation. I have seen God in this nation. I mean, I, I have seen God. I remember one time we were meeting at the overnight prayer meeting and was we praying there was a storm everywhere. It was, it was, it was the, the lights were, the, the, what do you call, trees had fallen and uh, the lights were just cut off everywhere. But then this particular sister comes and says, we didn't know, you know, in that, the very place we were praying, we didn't know what was happening on the outside. But then this lady comes, she drives, I think, from downtown coming to the meeting all the way in Ellicott City. And she says, all through as she was coming, it was all black, dark, pitch darkness. And the only place that there was light was where we met and where we were praying. Hallelujah. And for me, that was significant that when we begin to press into the things of God, in the midst of darkness, there will be light. Hallelujah. Now, that's not my message uh, today. I want to begin a new series, and I believe that the Lord will help us. Breaking the limits of our faith. Breaking the limits uh, from our faith. Whichever way you want to put it, or breaking the limits. I believe, as we've just shared, or as our, my brother shared, it's not that God does not want to do things in our lives, but it's just that we have limited him. And if there is one of the things that I believe happens on this side of the world because of the conveniences of life, you know, everything that you need at uh, uh, 911, they're there. Before you finish talking, they're there. You know, the conveniences of life that make it easy for you to trust in the human wisdom and on the ability of God. And that's not to say that the functioning system should not function. I thank God for this nation. I thank God for a place where the law works. Am I talking to somebody? That things work as they should. That's a blessing. The system is functioning. It's a blessing. It's my prayer that our develop, developing nation will tap into that. Hallelujah. Where the law functions, where the police enforces the law and they don't help break the law. Amen. But then because of the, the conveniences of life will limit the ability of God. It becomes easy to trust in the wisdom of men or in the natural ability and not in the power of God. Hallelujah. So I want to share for, I want us to pick from today. I'll be laying a foundation and then picking it up from there. As uh, Proverbs chapter 30 from verse 7. Proverbs chapter 30 from verse 7. I'll be looking at it from the message translation. Oh, thank God. Uh, Charles, you're doing well. Thank you. You're flowing. Hallelujah. Uh, the Spirit of the Lord is already descended upon him. Proverbs chapter 30 from verse 7. It says, and I prayed, God, I'm asking for two things before I die. Don't refuse me. Banish lies from my lips and liars from my presence. Give me enough to live on. Let's go ahead. Neither too much nor too little. If I'm too full, I might get independent. Saying, uh, saying God, in other words, what's God for? Why do I need God? Who needs him? If I'm poor, I might steal and dishonor the name of the Lord. So this is a this is uh, 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 a, a proverb of Solomon. We all know that Solomon was a man that was full of wisdom. Uh, the Bible tells us that when he went before God asking or praying, after his father declared that you build a temple, Solomon only asked for two things. He said, Lord, give me wisdom that I may know what to do. And so when we read this, Based uh, in the context or in the text, uh, based on what he's saying, we would assume, you know, that Solomon is saying, all I want is enough. That's the assumption that we'll make. Is that right? We'll assume that all that Solomon was saying, I just need enough for me to eat, me, my wife, my four kids, and nobody else. That's what we'd assume. 
Yeah? Because he says, give me, don't give me too much that I may forget you. Not too little that I may become poor. Hallelujah. That's a powerful prayer. But then, if you read it in the New King James, it sounds limiting. It sounds, Lord, just give me enough so that I may not steal from anybody, uh, so that I may just live a comfortable life. And that's why I said the comforts of life can make us miss on God. Hallelujah. They can make us miss on God. When everything is going smooth, when all the bills are paid, you know, I used to say it's not hard to preach when everything is taken care of. You'll be on fire. You'll be speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. You have faith at that time for the sick to, uh, for the uh, blind eyes to see. Because why you feel that you're in a place that all your needs are met and there's no need. Now that's the spiritual side. The carnal side would be that you don't need God anymore. If I can do it in my own strength. I can, if I can do my doubles, if I can do a little bit over, over time, and all those things are good. And don't get me wrong. I mean, I believe in God has given us wisdom. The Bible says he's given us the power and the ability to make wealth. It is the will of God for us to do well. Hallelujah. Uh, all of us who came to this side of this world, we came to better our lives. Why? Because it's the will of God for us to do well. Hallelujah. But it is not the will of God for us to indulge in wellness and forget him. That's not the will of God. Hallelujah. And that's what this man Solomon is teaching us. You see in theology, there is what we call hermeneutics. Hermeneutics is a study of interpretation. Now when we come to interpretation of scripture, we do it three ways. We, we look at the context of what the scripture is saying. And then we look at the law of first mention. Where else was it mentioned the first time? So that it sets the precedence of how it will be throughout the scripture. Am I making sense? So when Solomon is saying, give me just enough. Then you go back to the precedence where God began to do the same thing. We see that when he created man in the book of Genesis at chapter 1 from verse 26. It says he created man in his likeness in his, and his, in, in his image. But then he blessed man, gave him dominion over the field, over the works, uh, over the, over the uh, what do you call the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the land of the field. Is that right? He gave him dominion. God never limited man to how far he can go. Hallelujah. The limits came on man after he fell. Am I talking to somebody? Because he says, Solomon says, give me enough that I may not sin. But you see in Genesis, there was no sin. Am I talking to somebody? God gave Adam such wisdom that everything that he named up to today, we still call them what Adam named them. Hallelujah. He had, there was no limit to his intellectual abilities. Am I talking to somebody? Now, if you're going to go higher in the things of God, we have to develop in three realms. There is the, um, uh, there is the, what do you call that? There is the emotional intelligence. There is the intellectual intelligence. There is the social intelligence. But then there is the spiritual intelligence. In most cases, we have settled in the four realms, in the three realms. Am I talking to somebody? We have settled on the social. We have settled on the, on the intellect. And then we have settled on the, what do you call it, on the emotional. Those are the senses. Hallelujah. But if you're going to advance and break into new heights, where we see God manifested in the flesh, then we must go to the spiritual intelligence. Am I talking to somebody? Where we, not, where we walk not by sight, but by faith. Hallelujah. Where we don't see things as they are. We see things as they are supposed to be. Am I talking to somebody? Hallelujah. If you are going to break the limits of our mind and of our spirit, we must flow into that, 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 that fourth dimension. I like calling it the fourth dimension. 
the dimension that when you begin to flow in the realm of God and not in the realm of men. That's the dimension that affects the physical dimension. Hallelujah. Every breakthrough is a work that begins from the inside. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 3, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. We are products of our thoughts. When thoughts are not well tended to, they begin to affect our emotional, our intelli intell intellectual abilities. Am I talking to somebody? Hallelujah. Now, uh, if we can look at Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 16. Again, I'm back to the law of mention. Hallelujah. Are we getting something this morning? I'm just laying a foundation. We'll be picking it up. Uh, but I believe the Lord will help us. If we, uh, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 16. Let's look at it at the, in the Amplified Version. Amplified Version. It says, I entered into counsel with my own mind, saying, Behold, I have acquired great human wisdom. Note that. He said, I have acquired. God has enabled me to gather great human wisdom. Then he says, more than, that, more than anyone who, ever, who has ever been over Jerusalem before me. And my mind has had great experience of moral wisdom and scientific knowledge. Of course, if you study, uh, if you... Uh, if you understand how Solo God bless a Solomon with, with wisdom, uh, especially in read Chronicles, Solomon had the ability to, uh, what do you call that? Not only to acquire wealth, but the ability to, he was good in botanical, you know? He had written many song, songs of Solomon, the Proverbs that we have. I mean, he had this capacity that was just beyond Human ability. That's supernatural. But Solomon says, that I acquired, it was human wisdom. Am I talking to somebody? When I read that in the Amplified, it told me one thing, that you and I are operating below our abilities. Forget about now the spiritual dimension, but even in the human dimension. Because this man sang over 300 and something songs of Solomon. He wrote over over 1,500 uh, proverbs. That's one person. And he calls that the human wisdom. Now if the human wisdom can produce this dimension, what about the spiritual wisdom? Am I talking to somebody? If this is the natural wisdom that he says, God gave me such wisdom that anyone who came, who anyone was there in Jerusalem has never experienced it. Hallelujah. May God expand our abilities in Jesus' name. Oh my goodness. I'm praying that may God expand our abilities in the name of Jesus. That will not limit him to where we are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we see that if human wisdom can produce this, if we can tap into the spiritual dimension of the wisdom of God, the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 14, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they also are what? They are the sons of God. So the dimension of sonship or the dimension of the manifestation of the sonship of God is in the spirit realm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's in the spirit realm where we begin. Now I'm not saying be too spiritual that you're, you have no relevance to the world. No, no, spirituality should make us more relevant to this world. Hallelujah. As a doctor, Afuiz will be a doctor soon. As a doctor, when you have this spiritual... I, I, was, I, was, uh, I was watching the story of uh, Benny Carson, you know, the movie. And uh, my goodness, that's a movie I want to encourage you guys to watch. If you've never watched it. But this guy, in real life, they say he used to pray. Before he operated on any, he took on any operation. And one time, I think the first breakthrough that he had on operation was to separate, you have a name for them, con, con, conjoined twins. That was his first mission. It had never been done before. All the way, this couple from Germany, you know, he 
visit the family and I think they make arrangement, they come here. It's never been done. So the guy throws himself into studying. And he remembered one of the things that his, his, uh, I think his, his mother told him. You know, uh, He had a struggle in learning in, in early stages of Benny Carson. He was not good in learning, quick in getting stuff. Or else his method of learning was different from the way the teachers were teaching. So it took him time to come to a place where he developed his mind to where he can, uh, where he can function in an optimum, in a high capacity. So at that particular, one, one time during that time of his struggles, the mother tells him, it's not that you don't know uh, what the teacher is saying, but in your mind, it's like that tap, there's a, there's a blockage. If you can unblock the thoughts that tells you you are not good enough or you cannot make it. If you can block and block those thoughts, there's nothing that you cannot do. And so this time that this couple comes to John Hopkins and uh, they want to you know, do this uh, uh, operation, Benny Carson remembers what the mother told him. That if you can unblock that which is blocking your mental abilities, the same principle that he gave, she gave him was the same principle that he was going to apply on the two twins. Because they were wondering how can they separate them without one, uh, them bleeding to death or uh, uh, them having, a, what do you call that? Um, like uh, their, their minds, uh, I know we call it brain damage. Thank you. We have a doctor here <laughs> in the medical field. Thank God you came the right day. <laughs> Without, without affecting these kids to where they'll have a brain damage. So he remembers. I mean, as you're praying, the Lord reminds him of that. That if you can first block, you know, the nerves that are supposed to communicate, I'm not a doctor, with the entire system, and then unblock them after that. And that's how the breakthrough came about. Am I talking to somebody? In other words, Without, now, I know there are those who pray to something else, you know. But when I looked at, when I was watching that movie, the fact that he prayed and the Spirit of God enlightened his mind. Am I talking to somebody? To what he needs to do. Now, you need the physical, uh, not the physical, you need the intellectual ability. So that when the spiritual intelligence comes in, you are able to interpret the intellectual ability and apply it well am i making sense wisdom is the application of knowledge for you to function hallelujah you know we say you know that man is clever you can be clever but foolish is that right is that right i know in my class when i was growing up i had we had uh, we had i had very smart people ahead of me but the story was different after we left school after graduation, the story is different. Some of them, I know if I go back, back home, I'll find them where I, where, I, where I left them. So it's not about just being clever. It's about being walking in wisdom. May God give us spiritual wisdom. You didn't, you didn't hear me. I'm praying in the name of Jesus over your life, over your children. May God give us spiritual wisdom. That our capacity will be enlarged in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We do not see things the way we see them in the physical. We interpret them in the spiritual and we see things from a different dimension. Hallelujah. You're saying, Pastor, you don't know how my week was. You don't know how my family has been. You don't know the things that I've been facing. It's true, I don't know. But I know something. That what you see right now is not the reality. Hallelujah. They, those are facts, but facts are bound to change. Hallelujah. Truth supersedes facts. Am I talking to somebody? I see God shifting our minds to a different dimension in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I said I see God shifting our minds to a different dimension in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Peace receive it in Jesus' name. <laughs> Glory to God. Proverbs chapter 1.
Proverbs chapter 1, from verse 2 to 6. What I'm doing, I'm doing, the, I'm doing what we call the hermeneutics. You're interpreting that verse. What does it mean? How can we walk in the wisdom of God? Why did Solomon say what he said? Now, this is the reason. Let's look at it again in the New Living. Do we have New Living Translation? Let's look at it in the New Living Translation. He said, this is the purpose to teach people wisdom and discipline. Now, so that we understand what he's saying, let's begin from verse 1. From verse 1. Proverbs 1.1. 1, 1. He said, these are the parables of Solomon, David's son, the king of Israel. And then the purpose of these parables, verse 2. Their purpose, their purpose is to teach people wisdom and discipline and to help them understand the insights of the wise. Are we still here? Let's go to verse 3. Their purpose is to teach uh, people to live, uh, to live disciplined and successful life, to help them do what is right, just and fair. I believe the new uh, the New King James Version says to live in equity, in uh, justice, and righteousness, something like that. Their purpose is to teach people to live their discipline and successful life, to help them to do what is right. Please go with me. Let's, let's, let's move a bit fast. Verse 4. These Proverbs will give you insight to this. They will give insight to the simple and knowledge and discernment to the young. So he's explaining to us the purposes of the, of, of the, of the Proverbs. Is that right? So what he told us initially, give me enough so that I do not steal and I do not go hungry. That was meant for this verse 4. These proverbs will give insight to the simple. Simple, whenever you read, it's not simplicity. There are two, there are two different meanings. Whenever the Bible talks of being simple, it talks of being naive. The meaning of simple is being naive. So it says these Proverbs will give you insight, you who is naive, to understand knowledge and to have discernment or else the young men to have knowledge and have discernment. Let's go to verse 4, 5. Let the wise listen to these Proverbs and become even wiser. Let those, uh, let those with understanding receive guidance By exploring the meaning of these proverbs and the parables, the words of the wise and their riddle. In other words, as they read them, as they gather them, may this, that's the prayer he's praying, may it give them wisdom, may it help them to have insight. But he says the major reason, uh, Charles, let's go back again. Let's go back again to verse, I believe it was verse 2, 3. Uh, their purpose is to teach and to discipline. Verse 3. Yeah, their purpose is to teach people to live disciplined. Somebody say with me, disciplined life. And successful life. That's the reason why he was giving us the Proverbs. Give me enough. Because if I have enough, I will not waste. Is that right? If I have enough, I will not waste. But God does not want us just to have enough. He wants us to have more than enough that we can be a blessing. Is that right? But to the simple, enough is enough. Enough is good for them. Am I talking to you? To the simple, to the naive. Hallelujah. I was listening to somebody saying, if the wealth of this world was to be evenly distributed to everyone in the world, after five years, it will still end up to the wealthy people who had it before. That's powerful. That if the wealth of this world was evenly distributed to everyone, seven plus something billion people, if each one got equal amount after five years, that money will end up to the same, same people who are wealthy. So what's the problem? The problem is mindset. Am I talking to somebody? The problem is mindset. Hallelujah. And that's why these Proverbs are are insightful. It says to give you insight so that we can live a successful life, spirit, soul, and body. I want to be successful spiritually. I want to be successfully uh, successful in my health. Am I talking to somebody? My relationships, I want them to be successful. 
Hallelujah. I wish above all things that you may prosper even as your soul prospers. So the further your mind is expanded, the further you go. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth, but you will meditate therein. You will meditate. When you take the word of God and meditate, let it renew your mind. Meditate therein. Say, then shall you make. So the making of your ways is not God. That's been left to us to do. Am I making sense? Prayer that, oh God, make me rich, it will never be answered. Hallelujah. Because principles have, have been laid down for us to apply. Am I making sense? I see God taking us to a new dimension. I said I see God taking us to a new dimension in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So once again, our spiritual intelligence needs to be broadened to break the barriers within our lives. Hallelujah. Our spiritual intelligence needs to be broadened. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. The kingdom of God operates on two, or else it stands on two uh, principles, or on two legs. 1 Corinthians chapter 18, uh, from verse 18 to 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. He said, this message of the gospel, of the cross, is to those who are perishing, to those who are ignorant, to those who have no understanding of God. So this message is foolishness to those who are headed to de for destruction. But for those who are being saved, it is the very power of God. Let's go to verse 19. As the scripture says, as the scripture says, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and discard the intelligence of the intelligent. That's the human level. He says, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. So if we're leaning, and I believe that what we are seeing in these last days is God destroying the wisdom of the wise, confounding it, bringing it to foolishness. Am I talking to some, somebody? Hallelujah. Let's look at it in the, in, the, in the New King James Version. In the New King James Version. It says, for it's written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. Let's begin from verse 18. But the preaching of the cross to them that are perishing, it's foolishness. In other words, the spiritual things, the spiritual dimension to a common man, it's foolishness. Am I making sense? The wisdom of God to a natural man, it's foolishness. Hallelujah. But to us who are, who are saved, it is the power of God. My goodness. We have been walking with power, yet we are asking for power. You didn't hear me. We are praying for power, yet we are generators. We are carrying that power. So that's how our spiritual ability needs to be enlightened to see in that dimension. I'm a carrier of God's power. Somebody say with me, I'm a carrier of God's power. I'm a conduit of the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, by knowledge shall my people be delivered. My people perish for lack of knowledge. It's not because the devil is strong and tough. No, no, no. It's lack of knowledge. Hallelujah. When knowledge comes in, deliverance comes in. I see God delivering us in Jesus' name. I said I see deliverance in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Verse 19 says it's the power of God. Uh, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. And I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. So we cannot live our lives building it on the prudence of men or the wisdom of men because it's bound to be destroyed. God goes beyond biology. God goes beyond history and geography. Listen, what you're going through, the background, the history behind it cannot limit God. Am I talking to somebody? Oh, you know, they have studied, they've looked at my condition. Doctors have done what they can do in the physical. There's nothing else that they can do. Thank God for doctors. Thank God for the wisdom that he has given them. Now it's time to tap into the other dimension of the spiritual dimension. Am I talking to somebody? 
Because that which in the natural that cannot be done by men, that's where God walks in. Hallelujah. God enlarge our capacity to see beyond what we see. May God enlarge our capacity in Jesus' name. He says to us who have believed, this gospel is the power of God. I am a generator. You are a generator. You generate power. Hallelujah. When you begin to pray, in the name of Jesus, what you're doing, room, 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 room. <laughs> Listen, these are not stories. This is reality. Hallelujah. This is real. The Bible says, let the weak say they are strong. In the spiritual, in the normal wisdom, it doesn't make sense. We can see you're weak. Why are you saying you're strong? But in the spiritual dimension, when you begin to say you're strong, the strength comes in. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is our strength. That's, it doesn't make sense to the normal mind. How can joy be your strength? Because in the spiritual dimension of the spiritual intelligence, you're tapping into something bigger than the physical realm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My goodness, may God give us understanding in Jesus' name. So he says this. Let's, let's go ahead. Uh, uh, if you can jump and let's, let's go to verse 23. The same verse, chapter 1. Let's go to verse 23 and 25. Uh, 23 to 25. He says, but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block, to the Greek foolishness. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. So the spiritual dimension operates on these two things. He said, but, to, but unto them which are called, that is you and I. Somebody say, I've been called. Say, I have been called. I have been called by my name. The Lord has called me by my name. Say that with me. Hallelujah. So he said, both Jews and Greek, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. So the spiritual dimension where we operate, when we op when we want, if we want to operate in that spiritual dimension or spiritual intelligence, we need these two things. We need Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Am I talking to someone? Not the wisdom of men. He has already said the preaching of the gospel is foolishness to those who are perishing. So if there is any perishing in our lives, it means we are resting on the foolishness of men. Am I to, on, on the wisdom of men. Am I making sense? But then when we begin to tap into this dimension, where now we are tapping, now Christ... The word Christ is not like Julius Isendi, you know, like second name, uh, Afuadek, uh, Charles, or you know, or you know, no, it's not that. Christ is the anointed one and is anointing. So when it says the power of Christ, the power of God, in, in the anointed one, in um, Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good. So it's the anointing that enables us to function in the spiritual dimension. Am I making sense? Am I making sense to somebody? Hallelujah. So it's not our ability. Paul says, I can do all things through who? Christ who gives me strength. So if I'm going to function and break limitations, I need to operate in the anointing. There's the anointing to learn. There's anointing to lead. There's an anointing to influence and affect people. It's an anointing. This thing, it's a grace that is placed on you. Jesus would pray, and the Bible says when the disciples would come to him and says, many people are looking for you. So there is something upon uh, John the Baptist. If you read the book of Luke chapter 3, the Bible says God passes all. He passes Ananias. He passes Caiaphas. He looks for a man in the, in the wilderness and sends a word to him. In the wilderness. It's right there in the wilderness that people will begin and locate John the Baptist. What was on John the Baptist that people looked for him? It's an anointing. 
Am I talking to some? There was a grace on him. I'm telling you, my brother, and I was praying this morning, I was saying, God, I want that grace. I pray for that grace in the name of Jesus. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's by the spirit of the living God. Thank God for technology. Thank God for marketing. Thank God for good flyers. Thank God for, thank God for everything. But it's the anointing that makes the difference. Am I talking to somebody? It's the anointing. And let me tell you, you can be working, you can be having a, the same anointing that works in the physical, bringing people. It's the same anointing that can prosper your business. It's the same anointing that makes your kids to excel in everything they do. It's the same anointing that makes you to function with excellence at your place of work. It is the anointing that makes the difference. Am I talking to somebody? It says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's a mystery that has been hid. But now God is revealing it to us. Am I talking to somebody? So he says to the, to the Greek, this Christ or this part of God is foolishness. But to us who have believed, it is the power of God unto salvation. The spiritual intelligence when we tap into it, it's the power of God. Hallelujah. Just by virtue of tapping into it. Hallelujah. You know, it's like... Uh, into the power, even though it was disconnected, it was there. It's not that it wasn't there. It was there. All this time it was there. Is that right? All you needed to do was to tap into it and then begin to have the flow. That's the same thing with us. We are carrying this power with us, but we need to plug it and connect it into this Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse uh, 15. And I've always said Ephesians and Colossians chapter 1 from verse 9, they are the same. Paul is speaking to these two churches that is believed to have been mature churches. But he says, ever since I heard of your faith, I do not cease to pray for you. That the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ may give unto you the spirit of wisdom, verse 17, and revelation. Let's look at verse, uh, that's first, uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 15. Actually, just go to verse 17. It says that the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, or the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So if I'm going to function in the ability of God, I need the wisdom of God. Is that right? I need to tap into the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. I need wisdom, wisdom, on how to handle finances. You can do the natural way, but you can also tap in the supernatural way. Is that right? Huh? That, that doesn't mean you become foolish or I'm just led to do. No, every leading of the Holy Spirit will be in line with the scriptures. The scripture is never broken. Am I making sense to you? God will never tell you to do something that is contrary to his... Remember, we interpret the scriptures by precedence and context. It, the scripture helps interpret scripture. It cannot be out of, I feel, I saw, I think. No, that's subjective. Am I talking to somebody? And many times we have fallen into error because we follow the subjective. I saw this vision. I just felt. We have to go beyond feeling. To being led by the spirit. Hallelujah. 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 The Bible says this evil generation looks for a sign. They look for a sign. Before, it, it, Jesus called it an evil generation. Looks for a sign. But as we are wise, who are wise in God, we don't look for a sign. We go by the leading of his spirit. Am I talking to somebody? When Abraham, God speaks to Abraham and he tells Abraham, go and sacrifice your son, your only son. Isaac, he gave him a word, an instruction. And so he takes Isaac and a couple, a few of his, uh, uh, what do you call that? His servants. And they go to Mount Hebron, Mount Moriah. They mount. He goes to the mountain to offer him. But as, as they are walking, the sun, you know, it hits him. Hey, I mean, when they arrive, hey, we have everything here, but 
Where is the lamb? Now think with me for a moment. Abraham got an instruction. Now, I don't believe if you study the scriptures, it was not an hour's journey. You know, it wasn't like, oh, just get into Uber, you're there. No, this, it was mountainous. They had to carry food. If he had servants with him, that means it was quite some journey to go up the mountain. Is that right? So if you think about it, all this time from the time of the day that he got the instruction, he stuck to the instruction. He never went thinking, uh, what, what, what if it's not God? Or, or I don't feel this right. No, he just went by what God had said. Is that right? But then many times, God will give us an instruction. And then as we are pursuing that instruction, we, especially in the generation that we're in, exposed to all sorts of knowledge. You hear somebody saying something else. You forget the instruction, you begin to go with what somebody said. Am I talking to somebody? Not what God said, but what now the subjective that is, a, that is bound to change. So Abraham goes all the way up to that point that he goes to about to offer Isaac. Then the Bible says the Lord speaks to him, tells him, no, look, uh, lift up your head and see. There's a, a, a ram that is you know, tied, tied up in the thicket. It took spiritual wisdom and intelligence for him to realize that the first instruction that he gave me, until he speaks again, I'm not changing. Am I talking to somebody? Am I speaking? That's a word for someone. Hallelujah. God spoke to you when you landed. God spoke to you when you got into that place. There's a word that he gave you. If you can stick to that word, your deliverance is in that word. Am I talking to some, somebody? Your, deliver, your breakthrough is in the instruction. Now someone said, experience is the best teacher if it's not you experiencing it. And I agreed. Said amen. Hallelujah. Because there are some things I'm telling you. You know, <clears throat> let me talk to the young people so that you don't make the mistakes. Or you don't go through the experiences that we are talking about. Experiences are good teacher as long as you don't experience them. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? So in life, you learn what not to do by observing. And you also learn what to do by observing. Is that right? So experience is the best teacher, as long as you're not experiencing it, but instruction and the adherence to instruction is the excellent teacher. Am I talking to somebody? Because if you stick with instruction, you don't need, the, you don't need to go through the... Ex Only a fool says, let me experience it to learn. That's a fool. Hallelujah. Oh, let me, let me, let me, oh, you, you experience it, let me experience it. No, we are telling you it is bad. And you're saying, let me experience that bad. No, you, you, you didn't know how to avoid that bad, as we know. No, 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 no. Am I talking to somebody? That's a word to the wise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We saw it is dark. You say, no, 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 me, you know, nowadays the, the iPhone has light. <laughs> We're just going to try <laughs> <laughs> and you reach there, pam! Hey, something hit me. Experience is not the best teacher. Am I talking to somebody? After you've gone through it, you who went through it, it, it taught you better. You know this path, even if you pay me, I'm not going. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm telling you, there are things today if you tell me to do, I will run. I will not even pray. I will not bind. I will run. I will, you, you just see, you just see the, I will run. Hallelujah. Because it will remind me of the experience. Hallelujah. So the kingdom or the spiritual dimension as I close, as I said today, I'm just laying the foundation. It works on three things, two things. Christ. And then the wisdom of God. So Paul says, after I heard of your faith, I do not cease to pray for you that God may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation. 
Let me tell you, you're saying you don't know how to pray. I'm, I'm not talking of this prayer, Father, bless me. May we sleep well tonight. Provide for us. That's, that's, that's a basic prayer. There's another dimension of praying. Amen. And this is how Paul was praying. He says, I do not cease to pray for you. That the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ may give unto you the spirit of wisdom. and Because when I have wisdom and revelation, my needs will be met. Am I talking to this? When I have wisdom and I will know who to call, when to call, when I call them what to say. Am I talking to some? I will know where to go. Why? Why? Because the spirit of wisdom and revelation. When I attend that interview, I will know how to behave myself. This is beyond, this is beyond, okay, uh, this is the etiquette when you go there, do this. You do what you do in the natural, but there's another dimension that when you tap in, when you walk in, they say, you're the man. This is the person. I know of, I know of someone. They were shortlisted to three people. A very executive job. They were shortlisted to three people. And she, she didn't have the qualifications that they wanted. And we had, we had been praying, just agreeing. And so she said, I remember the day that she was going into an interview. She said, Pastor, I'm about to get in. Just speak a word. I said, listen, we've been praying throughout. You go and receive it. When you go there, smile at everyone and tell them you're glad to see them. And then you sit and relax. Let God do the rest. That sounded foolish. I even didn't know where it came from. She did exactly that. This, what she didn't know afterwards after she got the job, there had been tension in that room for, like for the whole week. And she lightened the place. Just by doing that, they liked her. Hallelujah. The short listing, she was, not, she was the least qualified. They even told her, we are giving you this job because you have positive energy. And we will show you everything that you need to learn to make you succeed. As I was talking today, she's one of the, lead, one of the team leaders in that company. The wisdom of God. It is foolishness. How do you just go and say, it is good to see all of you, I'm glad to be here, and just sit down. But you see, when you pray for wisdom and insight and understanding, God begins to open your mind and your spirit. You begin to tap to the present and not to the usual. Because wisdom, the natural human wisdom is static. It's standard. This is how we do it. Is that right? It is not... It's not fluid. Start, this is how we do it. When you come in, you do this. You, you, you behave like this. But the spiritual dimension flows in the present. When you are in the present, this is what you need to do in this present. Am I talking to somebody? Ay, 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 ay. This is what you're saying. Hallelujah. I see God opening doors for you. In places that they said it is impossible, you're walking into those places in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I see you doing, I see you guys doing exploits in the name of Jesus. By virtue of God's wisdom. So if you don't know how to pray, pray this prayer. Open Ephesians. It's, I've been doing that for years. Father, fill me with the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Sometimes I've missed it. As I said the other day, every bad thing in my life was because of my bad decision. Not because of God. Because every good and every perfect gift, they come from above. Is that right? I do not believe, I never give the devil credit. No. He will not receive any glory. Let God receive the glory. Hallelujah. It's been because I didn't hear, I was not designing, and he took, the enemy took advantage. Am I talking to somebody? So Paul says, pray that your eyes of understanding may be open. Uh, let's look at that same verse in the Amplified. I, I, I think I'll, I'll uh, I might stop there. And then, uh, wow. Yeah, we'll, we'll, let's finish with this. Yeah, Ephesians chapter 1, uh, um, uh, Amplified Version. Amplified Version. <laughs> okay. For this reason, because I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and of your love towards all the saints, 
and the people, verse 16, I do not cease to give thanks for you and making mention of you in my prayers. Now, these are powerful prayers. Let me tell you, if you don't have any prayer points to pray, or you said me, my prayers are just three minutes, take time and pray this. Verse 17, it says, For I always pray to God, always. So this was not a one-time thing. It was a consistent, persistent prayer that he was making. It says, I do not seize the King James, but this one says, I always not stick with that. I always pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, of insight into the mysteries and the secret into the deep and the intimate knowledge of him. Am I talking to somebody? So there are things that we go through in life that God can give us insight and wisdom to the secret of those things. Am I making sense? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That you begin to study a subject, but God gives you insight into that subject that you see beyond the pages. They call you genius. They don't understand it because you've tapped into another dimension. Am I talking to somebody? Now, all these scientists, I was reading, a, some time back I was reading a journal uh, about uh, um, Einstein. Uh, Albert Einstein, yeah? That's right. And uh, when he migrated from Germany, came to America, in Germ they had concluded that he's not smart, that he's slow to learn. That's human wisdom. They had concluded his abilities, they are like uh, his, 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 mature, his development process was, was behind by like two, three years. That's, that's Albert, Albert Einstein. So in this journal, they say he started studying and meditating what he was studying. That he would study and then take some time to think about what you're studying. Then he developed a habit of daily doing meditation. Now, this is a heathen. I don't know whether he was a Christian or not. It not, doesn't say there. But this is, this is somebody who never believed. You know, outrightly said he was a believer. Is that right? But he applied principles from the scriptures that made him to begin to be successful. Because the Bible says that when we take time to meditate these things, now he meditated on the things of the world. He became successful in that realm. Actually, it says uh, in the journal, because they are talking about the effect of religion and science. And they are going to Darwin and all these inventors that were there before. Uh, Steve Jobs. And they say, for example, Steve Jobs, he was a Buddha. And so they say he was active in meditation. And then this guy, they were active like uh, Tesla, I believe, that would spend t hours you know, like visualizing what he was going to do. They tapped into another realm, which was not necessarily the realm of light. But they got light from that realm. Am I making sense? Am I making sense this morning? In other words, if we can dwell on the wisdom of God, he says he will reveal to us the spirit of revelation that will give us insight into the mysteries and the secrets, into the deep and intimate knowledge of him. So there are things that when we begin to dwell on the wisdom of God, God is able to open our eyes to another dimension. Am I talking to somebody? Hallelujah. They say there has never been invention without wisdom being applied. So how much more if we go to this dimension of spiritual wisdom, where we take the word of God, this book of the Lord shall not depart of your mouth, you shall meditate therein day and night, but when you make, then you, you will make. You will make. He says you will observe to do. In other words, you will begin to understand what to do when you meditate. Am I talking to somebody? Oh my goodness. I will listen to this word myself again. Hallelujah. There is something that God wants to do breaking every limit in our lives. He spoke to Elijah and he tells Elijah... You know, uh, this servant of, I'm, I'm beginning to close. The servant of the Lord comes to Elijah. Uh, the city has been surrounded. 
uh, by, uh, by the armies and chariots are all over the city. And so uh, the servant of the Lord, uh, of Elijah, goes and sees outside. He sees this great vast army. He comes back to Elijah and tells, hey, outside it is bad. We are now doomed. Elijah tells him, give, him a, give me a minute. He begins to pray. And he tells him, now go out and look again. The man goes out and he comes back. He gives the same report. A th third time he tells him, no, go back again. And as he goes back outside again, the Bible says he sees the cloud. No, that's, uh, I'm, I'm mixing up the two. That, that's when, uh, when they were believing for rain to rain. He goes and he sees the hand of a, the cloud like a hand of a man. And when he saw that hand of a man, a small cloud, like a hand of a man, it had, there was famine throughout, but this particular time, that small cloud, that small hand of a man, say that's enough. That's enough. Because when you begin to see in that dimension, whatever little that you see in that dimension is able to affect every other thing that you see in the physical. Am I talking to somebody? But our eyes must see in that realm. This other time, that servant goes out and he sees a vast army. He tells him, no, go back again and see. The next time that he sees, he sees the armies of God surrounding the city. May God open the eyes of understanding. May he give us insight that the battle that you're fighting, you're not fighting alone. That the hand of God is behind every other thing that you're dealing with. If he can open your eyes to see that the end is not what you think it is, in the end you win in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spiritual wisdom. That's what will make the difference. Glory to God. When God opens our eyes, I'm believing God that before the coming of Christ, the Bible says that the mountain of the Lord shall be lifted above all the other mountains. The nations shall run to it. That out of the body of Christ, ah, ideas will begin to flow. We envy men like Zegabah. We envy this great man. But the truth is, I believe that knowledge missed onto the church because we were hung up. We are so hung up on doing things the traditional way. Am I talking to somebody? But may God open up our eyes to another dimension. Hallelujah. That as you walk, wherever you walk, you are a carrier of somebody. You are, you, I mean, you're a carrier of the glory of God. Wherever you walk, you have come there with the power and the wisdom of God. So when you begin to execute things like Joseph, they begin to wonder, Ay, there is something about this man that is not natural. Am I speaking to somebody? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That there is something on this young man that's not natural. This must be the hand of God. Because he's operating on another dimension. The Bible says that he was prosperous. How can be a prisoner be prosperous? How can be a servant who's been sold as a slave into a house of Potiphar be prosperous? His thoughts were prosperous. His sight was prosperous. The way he carried himself was prosperous. Am I talking to some? He did not limit himself to where he was. Oh, you know, you know in America, you know, you know in Kenya, you know in Cameroon, you know in Nigeria, you know, you know, we limit ourselves to the human wisdom. God wants us to come to another level. In the name of Jesus. I call you prosperous in the name of Jesus. I call you victorious in the mighty name of Jesus. I call you an influencer. You are a carrier. Your life will impact souls to the glory of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. That God is giving you speed and acceleration. Things that have been stagnant in your life from today. By the virtue of the revelation of the word of God. We command speed. We command speed. Momentum. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Where there's been confusion. Right now rebuke every spirit of confusion. I speak divine direction. Insight and understanding to you. In the name of Jesus. From today we begin to hear a voice speaking to say. Uh, speaking behind you saying. This is the way walk in it. In the mighty name of Jesus. I break every spirit of mediocrity. In the mighty name of Jesus. I call you to a place of excellence, spiritual intelligence, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Command yokes to be broken. Strongholds, mental strongholds, be broken in the name of Jesus. Traditions of men that make the word of God of no effect, I break your power. I command you to lose the hearts of men right now, 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Speak light. Let there be light and understanding. Father, for the entrance of your word gives us light and brings us understanding. Take all the glory and take all the praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Blessed be your name, Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. You see, maybe you're watching, you're not born again. You've never received Christ in your life. And, um, you know, this just sounds like something that you'd want to walk and experience, but you don't have connection with Christ. I want to make this invitation to you. All of us started from there. There is nobody who just found themselves born again. We made the same decision, a conscious decision, deliberate decision, a quality decision to follow Christ. If you've never done that, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to forgive me. Cleanse me with your blood and write my name in the Lamb's book of life. Thank you for saving me. Fill me with your spirit. Give me strength and wisdom to live for you. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for everyone that has made that prayer for the very first time. I pray for your grace over their lives, your strength in the name of Jesus. I ask that in Jesus' name, you begin to open their eyes of understanding on how to walk and to live, Father, even this new experience in the name of Jesus. Now, if you say that prayer, if you're within Maryland, more particular within Towson, would like to invite you, please pay us a visit. We meet every Sunday from uh, from. At 12 o'clock, it will be a blessing to see you. It will be a blessing to have you in church in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. Do you receive anything this morning? Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Now, I believe, I believe the information for prayer have you, is, must be there. Uh, you can contact, on the, contact us by the information that you see below the screen. And uh, the church address is also there. Um, that one will make you, uh, will help you to know where we are so that you can connect with us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we excited this morning? I don't know about you, but I'm blessed. I'm walking in a new dimension. Somebody say in the name of Jesus, from today, I decree every limitations around my life are broken in Jesus' name. By virtue of revelation of God's word, I break every stronghold in my mind, every stronghold in my spirit. I declare in the name of Jesus, him whom the Son sets free is free indeed. I declare I'm free indeed. I'm free mentally. I'm free spiritually. I'm free physically. In the name of Jesus, I decree from today, no more limitation, no more bondage. In the mighty name of Jesus, I function in the fullness of God. I function in the fullness of the wisdom of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I come in agreement with the word of God. That Jesus Christ has been made unto me wisdom. Therefore, I function in wisdom. For Christ in me is the hope of glory. I will do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Greater one lives on my inside. The greater one lives on my inside. I am born of God. Therefore, I overcome the world. I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father. I give you praise and I give you glory. In Jesus' name, walk in your deliverance. Hallelujah. Walk in your deliverance. Walk in your victory in Jesus' name. It's time to honor the Lord with our giving, uh, with our giving of our tithe and our offering. In this City Light Chapel, in this church, we believe you give cheerfully. You give willingly. You give as you have purpose in your heart. We don't coerce. We don't play, play tricks. We just, you know, uh, urge you to give as the scriptures encourage us. Say, the Lord loves a cheerful giver, not a grudging giver, but a cheerful giver. Amen. There are different methods to give. Please, if you can share them. Uh, we have Zale. We have Kashap. Um, 
um, share the most on the screen here, just so that, yeah. Hallelujah. We have Zil, we have Kashap. <clears throat> That's the way that uh, um, uh, we can give. If you, if you will, you can also do it through, uh, what do you call that? You can do it through by sending in your, there's the information like the, what do you call it? The address, church address, uh, that you can send in your check, and that will be a blessing. 8240 Lock Raven Boulevard. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. May the Lord continue to expand you. I'm praying for you as we continue to pray every day that the giving that you do sacrificially, whatever you're believing God standing in faith, may he meet you at the point of your need. In the name of Jesus. May he show himself financially strong on your behalf. In Jesus' name. Let's, ha let's have the declaration as we give in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Say, I'm a cheerful giver. I give willingly and not grudgingly. I honor the Lord through the giving of my tithe and my offering. The Lord is my source. He supplies all my needs according to his riches in glory. The work of my hands are blessed. I prosper in everything that I do. The Lord opens the window, windows of heaven up, up, above me. The Lord rebukes the devour on my behalf. No more lack. No more waste. The curse of poverty over my life is broken. I receive debt cancellation, financial wisdom, increase, promotion, bonuses, and uncommon surplus. I am a blessed giver and a blessed receiver in Jesus' name. Why do we make declarations of our giving? We give by faith. Amen. Our giving is an act of faith. It's an act of worship, but it's also an act of faith. Amen. The Lord bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that this week as we begin to step into this new week, may he, may he, every prayer and decree that we've made today, may it be manifested in your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Shall we rise up on our feet? I know today I've slightly gone beyond the time. Uh, hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord show his, uh, himself strong on you. Be of, uh, shine his face up, upon you in the name of Jesus. I pray over you this week. Walk in supernatural wisdom. Walk in divine favor. I declare that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You're living here safely. Those of us that are watching online, you're watching safely. We decree in Jesus' name that next week as we gather again, we'll meet safely in the name of Jesus. We declare no sickness, no calamity. In the mighty name of Jesus. That the blood of Jesus speaks of better things over your life. Go and conquer. Go and be victorious. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You're blessed. Have a wonderful week in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for connecting. Thank you for joining us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah.